Hi everybody, it's Amanda, and today we have a very exciting video. We are gonna go through an in-depth skincare routine. So let's get started. Also, check out my sweatshirt, super cute. Got it at a thrifting event that I went to in Chicago with my friend Amy. Anyways, in terms of purchasing new skincare products, I always read reviews. I never go in blind and buy skincare products. I wanna make sure that what I'm purchasing is, is well received from the consumer side. Clean beauty, natural beauty, if things are vegan, if they're not vegan, I don't really care. As long as the product's good, that works for me. Um, but clean beauty, like, I don't like that at all. I have all my notes on here. Um, and what I'm doing is just a nighttime routine. My daytime routine is, is pretty similar to what the nighttime routine is. It's a little bit more simple. Uh, and, and I just incorporate a sunscreen. So also, if you haven't watched my last YouTube video, uh, A Day in the Life of a Cosmetic Chemist, I do briefly go over my skincare routine in that one as well. This is just a more in-depth version. So we're gonna start with oil cleanser. So if I am wearing makeup or wearing sunscreen, I always want to take off my makeup with an oil cleanser first and then a water-based cleanser. And basically what oil cleansers do is they break down makeup, dirt, oil, sunscreen better than a water-based cleanser because these products are usually more oil-based. And also our skin is naturally oil-loving, lipophilic. In basics, like dissolves like. So we use an oil to remove an oil, or we use an oil to remove something that's oil soluble. Most, but not all, oil cleansers or cleansing balms contain emulsifiers. What emulsifiers do is they bind the water to the oil product, which makes rinsing it off with water easier. So for example, if you're cleansing your face with just coconut oil, that's gonna be a lot more difficult to remove versus if you're using a more traditional cleansing oil. So that's the function of the emulsifiers in there. Just something that I wanted to share, not like something that most people talk about, but I think it was very interesting and I just learned about it recently. You can see my sister's cat in the back. Um, the two products that I love are the Vanilla Co. Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. This one's really great, relatively affordable. It melts quickly and applies really well. It also rinses off very well. Um, what I also value about cleansing products is if it burns the eyes. I have relatively sensitive eyes, so this one doesn't burn it at all. I, I don't have any issues with it. And overall, it's a very gentle product. It works very well into the skin. It cleanses well, and I don't feel like my skin is stripped. The second one is the Garnier Micellar Water. This is the waterproof version. Um, micellar waters aren't really cleansing oils, but this one is by phase, so I'm gonna count it as it. They use surfactants to form micelles around the dirt, oil, makeup molecules. Um, and what surfactants are is they have, I'm gonna put an image somewhere. They have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. And during the cleansing process, the tails will form kind of like these circular structures around themselves and will trap the dirt and oil in that and solubilize it. And then the hydrophilic head is what allows for easy rinse off. So it's basically like picking up the dirt, trapping it in like a sphere, and then is easily rinsable. So to use with the cleansing oil or the cleansing balm, I'm, I apply maybe like half a tablespoon of the product, work it into the skin, and then really lather it up. And then I rinse it either with water or with a water-based cleanser. Same thing with the Garnier Micellar Water. I just use a um, reusable cotton round, apply the product, and then remove my makeup. If I am wearing a full face, I use the cleansing oil, but if I'm wearing just like eye makeup, which I usually do, then I will just use the Garnier Micellar Water. So the next product category is the water-based cleansers. Push my smoothie aside. What these cleansers are, the more traditional ones that, that most people know and most people use, um, they contain surfactants similar to micellar, actually the same as like micellar waters, and they use that to cleanse the face. So they use anionic surfactants, Anionic surfactants are negatively charged, our skin is negatively charged, so that is what is acting as the cleansing portion of the product. I also have, I have a debunking bad skincare ingredients video, um, and I talk about sulfates there. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about like micellization, you can take it on over, over there. The purpose of the water-based cleanser, if you're using it as an oil and water cleanser duo, is the water-based cleanser is just basically getting rid of all of the excess oil-based cleanser that you have. So 
you use the oil as the primary, the water as the secondary. The two products that I love are the Kors Greek Yogurt Foaming Cream Cleanser. This one has a great lather. What I look for in a cleanser is if it has a good lather. Having a product that foams better or lathers better than another one doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting a better cleanse. It just means that there is more foam stabilizers and such. Um, but that's my personal preference. I like to be able to like feel that foam. So it's very gentle as well. I've said very so much so far. It's gentle. I don't feel like it's stripping the skin at all. Uh, overall, I feel like my skin remains rather hydrated when I'm like out of the shower or out of cleansing just the face. The thing that I don't like about this product is the, the claim of yogurt, the claim of probiotics. Probiotics are living bacteria and in order to claim probiotics according to the FDA is that you have to prove that there are live bacteria. Um, and a lot of companies really take advantage of that because the FDA doesn't really regulate cosmetics like they do drugs. If your product, if your cosmetic product claims probiotics, like, no, they don't. Like, they don't have probiotics in there. When you say that you have, like, yogurt or yogurt powder or fermented product in there, it's really just a postbiotic or a prebiotic, something that can, like, potentially encourage more probiotic development. Um, so that's just something, that's just, like, a side note that I didn't, I don't really like is, is that claiming probiotics when there aren't actually probiotics. Um, it doesn't change the formula of the product. It's still a great formula. I just don't like that side of the marketing. A second cleanser that I love and most people do is the Crave Matcha Hemp Cleanser. This one again has good lather. It's even more gentle, I would say, than the Kors one. It feels great, great sensory feel to it. It's not stripping at all. And then similar concept, the thing that I don't really like about it is both the matcha and the hemp. So it's a rinse off product. The whole point of it is to be on your skin for like 30 seconds. There's no real need to have ingredients like matcha or hemp in there other than marketing, which is totally fine. Um, marketing is the name of the game when it comes to the industry. So putting fancy ingredients like that makes sense for that purpose, but not for like the actual rejuvenating aspect of hemp or matcha. So that's just something that I wanted to share. It's, it's more for marketing, less for functionality. So we're moving on from rinse off products and then we're moving to leave on products, which is much more fun in my opinion. With leave on products, we wanna go in order from water base to oil base. That reason being is that our skin, like I stated before, is lipophilic. So we wanna make sure that we're not risking evaporation of our water-based products by putting it at the end, which is why we put everything that's water-based up front. The first leave-on product that I would recommend is a toner or an essence. Toners used to be used for like rebalancing pH. Now there's a lot of functionality for toners and essences. And what they do is add immediate hydration post shower or post cleansing. And they also prep the skin for the other water-based ingredients or water-based products that you're gonna be using. The toner that I love is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA BHA Pore Tight Toner. I've talked about it before, I think. Really love this product. It contains both polyhydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids to gently exfoliate the skin. It's not at an active level, so it's not gonna be claimed as an OTC drug or anything. Um, basically just ensures that this product is super gentle and great for everyday use. One thing that I found unique about this product in particular is the first ingredient is cactus extract. How you read inky lists is it goes from highest concentration to lowest concentration, highest concentration to lowest concentration. For the most part, there's some variation. I think that is what they claim gives it its nice bouncy texture. I just thought it was cool because most toners and essences, the first ingredient is water. So cool stuff. It's hydrating. I think it's perfect for post cleanse to add that, that splash of water that you need. And it also prevents Transepidermal water loss, also known as TEWL. And what transepidermal water loss is, is kind of like that feeling of your skin getting tight and taut when you get out of the shower. So we wanna be able to prevent that as much as possible and quickly rehydrate the skin after you cleanse. In terms of like long-term effects, I guess, I think that it makes my skin look a lot more radiant. I'm not sure about the benefits of it with pores, but then again, pores are really difficult to treat. Cosmetic products are not miracle workers, so I don't blame this product for making for not making my pores look like they don't exist. Overall, this is a 10 out of 10 product though, really love it. How I like to use the 
glow recipe toner is I just add like two drops of it. It's, it's quite viscous for a toner. Um, I add like two drops of it to the palm of my hand and then I pat it into my skin and then continue on with the next step. So very simple. I think that they recommend using a cotton round, but I feel like that's very wasteful. So I just put it directly onto my hands. Okay, I had to pause because butter was using the restroom. The next step is mist and humectant, or in this case, mist and hyaluronic acid. Facial mists are just used to add hydration, similar to an essence. I think that they also are used to encourage more moisture binding for the humectant. And what humectants are, are ingredients that draw moisture from the deeper layers of the skin to the surface, also known as the stratum corneum. They also draw moisture from the atmosphere to the stratum corneum. And my thought process for this, I don't know if it's 100% true, I don't even remember where I read it, but my thought process is that you apply the mist to the skin so that there's already moisture on there, and then you add your hyaluronic acid so that it can bind to all of that and add extra hydration to the skin, and then you seal it with some more mist just to make sure that you have a lot of water on the skin. I cannot confirm if that is accurate. It just sounds so right in my head. So I'm gonna look into it and then I'll put it in the comments or something, I don't know. The combo that I love is the Bad Habit Chill Out Adaptogen Hydrating Mist. This itself contains humectants like butylene glycol and glycerin. It also contains sodium hyaluronate which is the salt form of hyaluronic acid. It's got a smaller molecular weight, so it should be able to penetrate deeper into the skin, which is nice. And then I pair it with the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5 Hydrating Serum. The claim, they make a cool claim. It is a next generation hyaluronic acid cross polymer. It cross-links, it's the cross-linked form of hyaluronic acid that enhances the delivery of hyaluronic acid actives and support water density. Basically, they're using new technology that is the best hyaluronic acid that you can have. So, cool stuff. It is paired with pro vitamin B5, also known as panthenol, and it's just used as another hydrating ingredient. So, super, super hydrating. So, I do mist, I do four spritz, and then I apply the ordinary. I do like two drops, and then I pat it into my skin, and then I do like another four mist, and then that is all of that. Okay, then we get into the oil based ingredients. We have serums and oils. Now, technically the hyaluronic acid was also a serum, but the serum that I am going to talk about is an oil-based one, so that's why it's in the oil-based category. You also don't need two serums. That's just my personal thing. You don't need a complicated skincare routine. Serums are products that usually contain actives or they serve a singular purpose, so like, vitamin C for brightening, or vitamin A, a retinol for anti-aging, or some emollients for rejuvenating. So they usually have one particular goal and they have like one or two ingredients that they highlight in the product to serve that goal. With oils, oils are emollients. Emollients replenish the skin and add moisture to the skin. There's a difference between hydration and moisturization. Hydration is replenishing with water and the moisturization is replenishing with oil. The two products that I love, the Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief. One of, I said it in my last video, the best skincare product of all time. One of the few products that I constantly repurchase. I think I've gone through three or four bottles of it. And we're gonna break down some of these ingredients. It contains 10% tamani oil, kind of a lot. And tamani oil is rich in fatty acids. Our skin's natural oils are three main things, cholesterol, ceramides, and fatty acids. So when we are cleansing our skin, a lot of times people really like to focus on ceramides, but cholesterol and fatty acids are the ones that we're losing the most when it comes to cleansing. So it's important that we really replenish those two in particular, which is why probably they have that high of tamanu oil to add some more fatty acid to the skin. It's also rich in antioxidants, so it protects our skin from reactive oxygen species. Um, it also can protect from like weathering. It just really helps strengthen up that barrier. This product features Ceramide NP, which is a skin identical ceramide. So it's an ingredient that mimics the ceramide on our skin. Also adds to building up the barrier and strengthening up our skin. I think that it has an amazing blend of both emollients and humectants. Having that equal balance just improves the health of the skin overall and improves the appearance significantly. And 
what I see this product as is like all in one. It replenishes the skin of everything that it needs. It makes the skin healthier and it will increase the protection in that way. As long as you can make your skin barrier as healthy as it can be, you're gonna start seeing results. You're, you're gonna get less acne, you're gonna get less dry skin and less dry patches, and you're gonna see a lot more of a revitalization of your skin by targeting the skin barrier. I like to pair this with the Ordinary 100% Organic Rosehip Seed Oil. This is also rich in fatty acids, particularly omega-3 and omega-6. And I think that this product absorbs relatively quickly, not too short, not too long. Um, I love the way it feels on the skin. It's not heavy, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's like gone, you know? So how I apply it is after the hyaluronic acid and mist, I take like one pump or two pump of the Great Barrier Relief, work it into the skin, let that sit for a bit, and then I add the ordinary two to three drops into the palm of my hands and then press it into the skin. And that adds amazing moisture. Okay, and then we're on to the last product for the face, which is moisturizer. What I personally look for in a moisturizer is something that is rich and has some long lasting moisturization and hydration. I have drier skin, so I wanna be able to target the dry areas that I have. The product that I love is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. The highlight ingredients are squalane, shea butter, colloidal oatmeal, allantoin, and ceramide NP. Great list that they have, and that's not even all of it. They are all fantastic moisturization ingredients. I talked about colloidal oatmeal in my last video, how it is used as an anti-inflammatory ingredient. So if you want to check that portion out, it's really short, but, but very interesting. And I enjoyed learning about that. Another ingredient that they have is dimethicone, which is a silicone. And it basically just makes the product feel good. It's more for a sensory purpose and, and it leaves the product feeling luxurious. Um, I know some people have mixed feelings on silicones. I personally think that they're totally fine. I don't even remember if I talked about silicones in my debunking video, but if I did, if I did, you, you should check it out, I think. I think I did talk about it though. Um, another thing that I like about this product, other than the texture, it's got an amazing texture. Um, it has a lot of structuring ingredients in there, so it really is able to hold its shape and feel almost like a body butter with without feeling like incredibly heavy the very last step of my skincare routine is lip balm i have to lather on lip balm before i go to sleep if i wake up with crusty lips it bothers me what i look for one criteria it's gotta be thick i love a really thick like ointment feeling lip balm and what's the key ingredient for that petroleum the two lip balms that i love aquaphor cannot go wrong with aquaphor pure petroleum jelly. It's amazing, long lasting. Everyone should have a bottle or a tube of Aquaphor. The next one is the Glossier Balm.com. I don't care what flavor it is. Right now I have the original one, um, but I've tried the rose and the fig. They're all good. I It's also petroleum based and I think that the texture is great. Super moisturizing for the lips. Okay, and that is all for the video. I do want to add that even though I have provided what works for me, if there is a product that is working for you and you don't feel like you need to change it, there is no need to change it to fit what other people are saying. So this is kind of like maybe a little saucy, but if you find that something like Clean and Clear or the Neutrogena Grapefruit Wash works for you, then stick to it. If, it, if it's doing good for you, then you don't need to change something. So I just wanted to share that. Um, hopefully you got something out of this video, whether it just be learning about a, a product category or a particular ingredient, or you're gonna look into one of the products that I recommend, that is totally perfect for me. So I hope you enjoy and let me know your thoughts about this. Also, let me know your thoughts. I am thinking of doing a skincare routine video for men. I feel like men are often neglected in the skincare conversation because a lot of cosmetics are targeted towards women, but let me know your thoughts. I wanna know if this is something that maybe you're interested in. So yeah, hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. If you watched the whole thing, very kind of you. I know I talk a lot. Um, and let me know what else you would like to see. Have a great day. Bye-bye.